Welcome to the Coach's Corner. We're here in the Tivoli Tap House where they have great food and great beer. I'm Brenda Vasquez alongside with Katherine Nienbach. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm a little bit chilly. Uh, it actually just started snowing about 30 yeah. minutes ago and I am feeling it. I'm not. It was like that wet cold, so my hands were freezing. Yeah, I should I'm have not digging gloves. this weather at all. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> well, who are we having in today's show? Well, as you know, the playoffs are here for spring sports, so we're going to chat with head tennis coach Josh Grates to tell us how they went in the RMAC tournament this past weekend. Then we're going to bring on coach Annie Van Westinga, who's going to tell us her thoughts on the team and how they can make their mark in their conference playoffs. And sticking with softball, we're going to bring in freshman Lainey Shepard, who's going to join us and tell us how her season is going and what the team needs to do in order to do well this weekend as well. Cool. So the playoffs are always an exciting time for us here at MSU Denver, but before we bring in our first guest, let's recap you on what happened this past weekend in Roadrunner Sports. The softball team hosted crosstown rival Regis University in the final weekend on the RMAC regular season, and the Roadrunners would go on and sweep the Rangers in the four-game set. The home team celebrated Military Appreciation Day by having veteran fathers throw out the first pitch. In the game, Darby McGee keep the Rangers bats very quiet, giving us just one hit in the complete game win. The offense piled up 13 runs on 15 hits, including three hits and three RBIs from sophomore A.B. Anderson. The RMAC tournament is up next for the squad. The baseball team welcomed in the sixth ranked team in the nation, Colorado Mesa, and battled the Mavericks tough in each game. In the finale, the red and blue got home runs from Jake Kostaitis and Zach Walsh to keep it close, but it was one run too short, falling 11 to 10 in game four. One more RMAC weekend for Coach Ryan Strain's squad before the RMAC playoffs. Our women's tennis, tennis team earned a spot in the RMAC tournament in Grand Junction this past weekend. The first, they first took on CSU Puebla in the semifinal round and took it to the Thunderwolves, earning the 40 nothing win. Number two and number three doubles earned wins to clinch the doubles point. It was then on two singles plays where wins by Olivia Kaiser and Alyssa McKean sealed the victory to move on to the finals. But that is where the run would end, falling 42 to Dixie State in the finals. Coach Greats will tell us more about the conference tournament in a few minutes. Our outdoor track and field team are also competing in some hard way at the RMAC championships. Freshman phenom Nick Nolan led the way by finishing fourth overall in the 800 meters and running a leg in the 4x400 relay team, who also finished fourth. Brandon Bodner, Blaze Holland, and Michael Decay also were part of this team that made the high finish by the relay team. Austin Davis would place fifth in the 110 hurdles, while Michaela Renfro placed fifth in the 400 meter dash. You can get the rest of the results from the meet at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. So now we bring in our first guest. He is the head coach for our men's and women's tennis team. Uh, he is Josh Greats. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So before we get into the RMAC tournament, we want to talk about a couple of your young player, your women players mm -hmm. uh, who won some RMAC awards. Tabitha the Por Porter won the RMAC Player of the Year for the second time in her career. Talk about her season and what makes her student her stand out among the RMX best. Yeah, I think with Tabby, she just knows her game better than, than anybody. Uh, she doesn't necessarily have any weapons as a tennis player, but she's very gritty and she knows how to win, which is important. Um, uh, Tabby's been a huge asset to the team. Uh, she's team captain and she leads by example and she does you know, a really, really great job. All right, sticking with the women, uh, Helena Steenberg is tapped as the least co-freshman of the year. Uh, it's always tough to come up in Division Two and really play well, but it seemed like she was ready to roll and played great in this first season. Yeah, no, Helena has improved a lot since she first uh, arrived into Denver. Um, you know, I think she was, you know, a little shocked by, um, you know, being a student athlete in the fall, and she's really, really grown uh, this spring semester. She's one of the more talented tennis players I've seen, um, and I'm, you know, really excited to watch her develop over the next few years. So now let's get into the women's team competing for their third straight RMAC tournament crown. Uh, the scoring was a bit different than last year's RMAC tournament where they had to win five matches to earn the win in the 2018. Uh, do you think that makes a difference in how the athletes compete and are there any adjustments that they have to have this season to make in the change? With the scoring change, you mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, you know, there are a couple changes. Uh, points are a little bit more important now. Once you get to a juice point, that next point wins. Uh, so there is, you know, that added pressure as, as a player out there. And uh, it's something we, we train a lot uh, in practice. We add kind of certain scenarios to add that pressure on. Um, you know, and I, I think we've done a pretty good job. So 
you know, as, as, a, as a player, you, you want to be in that moment. And, you know, if you don't want to be in that moment, then you're in, you're in a lot of trouble out yeah. there. So, um, you know, embracing the moment is, is important. Of course. So your team first took on CSU Pueblo in the semifinal round. Uh, you actually played them a few days prior. Does that excite you or does it terrify you? Because, you know, you just played that opponent. <laughs> uh, you know, that was the third time we'd played them in the space of about a month and a half. So I, we, know, we knew that opponent very, very well. And I think that was an advantage, probably also an advantage for them. So uh, it was great that we came out strong uh, in, the, in that match. Uh, I don't think we, we didn't really give them a chance from the start, which was important because, uh, you know, if you let a team uh, get into the match that can that can be an issue out there yeah. so uh, we started strong and uh, we didn't really look back from that match so how did it end up playing out we all know that you took the four to zero victory so we uh, started really strong in doubles uh, went up one zero and then uh, I believe it was Olivia and Eliza that went ahead and uh, won the singles matches uh, they they played really really well and the important thing was that we were up in all the other matches as well we were firmly in control uh, the way it works in the in the Armac tournament is you play to clinch. So as soon as a team gets to four, uh, the match just stops. So, no. yeah. So how much does uh, experience play in this win? We mentioned that two previous Armac tournament titles were won by two. Uh, it was they were won by a women's the women's team, and a lot of the, those girls were on those two title teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you feel that they played a part in the victory? Yeah, we've got three girls, I think, that, that started that had played in an Armac tournament before, and that was that was really important going into that, having that, that prior experience. Uh, and it's important just passing that message along to the other girls that, you know, it's going to be okay, just go out there and focus on yourself and, and realize that, you know, it is an Armac tournament, but at the end of the day, it's just another tennis match. So the win ended up moving the squad to the RMAC finals against Dixie State. Uh, they actually defeated hometown Colorado Mesa in the semifinals. Uh, how did the finals go for your team? Yeah, you know, obviously it wasn't the result we were looking for. Um, we had beaten that team earlier in the season, so it was you know, obviously disappointing to not get the win there. But at the end of the day, I think Dixie just wanted it a little more when it, when it mattered most. That was their first uh, RMAC title in their history. So. Uh, you know, congratulations to them. They came out strong, and when it mattered most, uh, they wanted it just a little bit more than us. So, um, you know, we'll learn from that, and we'll get better. <laughs> I agree. So with the RMAC tournament in the rearview mirror, uh, is there a chance for the men's or women's team to earn a bid into the regional tournament? For the men, we're in a... We're in a very close spot. So the top four go to, to the regional tournament. We're in fifth right now. So uh, unfortunately, the men didn't get to play in a conference tournament. So it's a little bit out of our hands right now. There's a couple other conference tournaments uh, going on in the region next weekend. Uh, we just kind of need to hope that the results go our way and then we get that bid. Uh, on the women's side, unfortunately, our season's uh, concluded. So uh, the women just have to look Look forward to next year. Uh, thankfully, we don't have any seniors on the women's <laughs> side, so you know oh, we can okay. really uh, grow as a team and, and get better. All right, Coach, it's time to give you a chance to earn some points in the trivia game. Uh, he, Josh is in last place, so we're going to give him a chance to move up quickly. <laughs> I haven't been asked a question yet, though, so. <laughs> blame uh, Eric. Eric. Yes, right. we can blame Eric. <laughs> we'll have 100%. words. So here's your question. There have been 14 men and women's tennis players who have won the RMAX Players of the Player of the Week Year Award. Name as many as you can, and we'll give you a point for each. If someone won it twice, tell us, and we'll give you two points. Player of the Week, is that you said? Player of the Year. Player of the Year. Um, well, myself. Um, player of the Year, Tabby. Uh, I'm assuming Beck Mears probably won Player of the Year at one point. Uh, I think there was a guy named Sasha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, he's uh, killing it, guys. <laughs> let's see. Keep going, keep going. Peter Lance, did he win it? Oh, man. There you go. Five. Um, That's two points, isn't it? Because he won twice. Uh, yeah, he, oh. he won twice, obviously. I, I knew that. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, twice, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Tabby's definitely won it twice. Anybody else? I don't know. Am I at the top of the leaderboard yet, or what? I don't know. How many, How many points is he? Where is he sitting? I think I'm at eight, maybe. Oh, there we go. <gasps> Second you gotta keep going now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Pressure's on. 
Okay, there we go. I'll save it for there. I don't want to go to the top <laughs> just just yet. Just yet. <laughs> he, he wants to give opportunity to, to the others. last. That's right. To get That's that right. Trophy. That's so nice from you. <laughs> Well, Coach, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Congrats on getting your spot to the RMAC Tournament Championships for the third straight season. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having <laughs> Thank me. You. So before we take our first break, uh, it is a time of the show where we bring in our Tweet of the Week. It comes from the softball team who saw a record go down over their series against Regis this past weekend. Darby McGee racked up 10 strikeouts in two games and became the program's all-time strikeout leader. She passed Brittany Moss, who played from 2009 to 2013. McGee now has 294 career strikeouts, and guess what? She is only a junior, so she'll have an entire 2020 senior season to pile up a few more. Great job, Darby. It is time for that break, but we'll talk to some softball up next on the Coach's Corner. Family-owned Argonaut Wine & Liquor is Colorado's largest superstore. A fixture of Denver for over 45 years, Argonaut has always been the go-to place for liquor, wine, and beer. Whatever you need for that special occasion, big party, or quiet night, Argonaut has it. It's one-stop shopping for all of your beverage needs. We have over 40,000 square feet of space and more than 15,000 items. That's the largest selection in town at the best prices. Plus, we deliver, and parking is free. Join our preferred shopper program to save even more. ArgonautLiquor.com, your liquor superstore for every occasion. We are student athletes from the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Let's get real about mental health. One in four of us are currently living with a mental illness. Let's have an honest conversation about mental health. One in two of us will have a mental health issue during our lifetime. Most of those who can get help improve their quality of life. You can help stamp out the stigma associated with seeking help. Take the pledge at Stamp Out Stigma. I'm Ashley Kim, senior second baseman for the softball team. Got the power, they have the ability to do so, and the diving stop by Kim gets there in time. What a play there by the senior. And you're watching the Coach's Corner, get rowdy. So glad you're back with us, but before we talk to, Van, to Coach Van, we want to remind you that the Tivoli Tap House will soon be hosting their next happy hour. Thursday, May 16th will be the next Mug Club Happy Hour. So if you aren't already, you need to become a member of the Mug Club to really take advantage of those special days. Visit TivoliBrewingCo.com to find out how to become a Mug Club member today. They also have a same club, different mug membership that allows you to take advantage of house wine and cider in case beer isn't your thing. Again, visit TivoliBrewingCo.com to get all the info you need. We now say hello to Annie Bat Witzinga, yeah. the head coach for our softball team. Coach, good to have you back. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. You're welcome. How, how fast has this season gone for you? One moment we were talking about attacking the day, and now we're talking about, about playoffs. Oh, every season goes super fast. That's crazy. Like, it's almost May. I can't believe yeah. it. It, it always seems like like once St. Patrick's Day hits, it's it just goes yeah, fine. it's like gone like that. So it's it's crazy. You're right. It was like one minute, just been like two weeks ago we were in February talking about development mm -hmm. and everything, and now we're talking about <laughs> being in the playoffs. Yeah, it's crazy. So there were a lot of great storylines from your final regular season weekend. Uh, let's first talk about celebrating the military military appreciation day. Can you tell us what softball did? Yeah, so military military appreciation day, always kind of a cool day. Um, we decided um, we have multiple dads of players who served in the military, um, and then my dad did as well. So and he was out this weekend from Iowa. So we had all the dads of the players and my dad there um, who served in the military uh, to throw out the first pitch. So it was pretty cool. Um, Rebecca and Gonzalez's dad was Marines. Corey Wright's dad, Marines. Jasmine Wessel's dad, uh, Navy. And then my dad served in the Army. Mm -hmm. So they all threw out a first pitch, which was pretty cool. So nice. it sounded like your father may have missed his target. Little <laughs> wide left, yes. Wide left? Wide left. I tried it and I tried to pull out my old catcher skills, but I failed. <laughs> And you know what? It wasn't the pitcher's fault. A good catcher would have stopped it. <laughs> so your squad took on the Rangers to finish out the regular season mm -hmm. and took game on fairly easy, a 13-0 win. Mm. Uh, Darby, Darby McKee was a great once again from the circle, but how about Abby Anderson? Yeah. Who, who knocked in three runs. We haven't talked about her too much, but she's the sister of a former player here 
here as she transferred over from another RMAC school. Yeah, yeah, Abby came in this year as a sophomore, uh, transferred in from another school, um, and uh, sister of Annika. And so obviously we know the, the Anderson family pretty well and pretty close to them. But Abby has been in and out of the starting lineup a little bit. And uh, JJ Shepard's dealing with an injury right now. And so uh, Abby's getting a few more chances. And she's always someone we try to get pinch hits to and try to give her opportunities because there's so much power there. She's a very, she's a big, strong player. Um, so she always like with one swing of the bat can kind of change the game. And so she, she had a really nice day. I think she went three for three and three RBI something like that so good yay day for her and she also uh, on uh, Saturday hit a big home run as well so game two didn't come as easily for your team uh, you had to use a little bit of late inning dramatics from Bex and Gonzalez to take the win um, do you feel that the team is getting to the point where you guys can win games in different ways yeah absolutely I think I think we're getting to the point where uh, we have different people who can win games for mm -hmm. us uh, I think there was time of, times in the year where there's only like maybe two or three players who were being consistent and doing some things, but now um, up and down the lineup, we have different players stepping up with, with big hits, key hits, you know, like obviously Rebecca had the big walk-off mm -hmm. hit that game, but um, uh, Audie Valdez, mm -hmm. another freshman, had a huge double in that inning to, to tie the game with two outs. Um, that was big, and then Megan Sandsburn came up with a big walk after Ashley Kim got hit by a pitch, and then uh, Rebecca came up and first pitch she saw, she, she sent it to the gap and walked us off, which was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, me too. So we saw your squad finish out this series on Sunday with two with wins in both games against the Rangers. Yeah. Uh, one play that stood the stood out. One play that stood out was Adi Valdez, mm -hmm. her catch uh, in the left field. Yeah. How was this? How has the freshman come along in the, her defense this year, along of the ball head to the left field? So you've put a lot of trust in her. Yep. So Adi, um, she is one, you know just super hard worker, tough kid, lots of grit. Um, so it was an awesome moment. She kind of pulled out some Spider-Man skills, <laughs> climbed that, that fence and, and, and went for it, which was awesome. So on one hand, not shocking that she did it because she kind of has that toughness and the work hard, um, work ethic about her. Uh, but it was pretty cool to see that is something we've been pushing our outfield, especially our freshman outfielders, to keep going back on balls, get that a good aggressive um, jump on it, and, and don't give up on it. If we got room, go for it. And that's exactly what Shadette did. It was a really cool moment for it. We got it on, on video and on camera. So <laughs> it was huge. It was awesome for her. I'm glad. Like, it's always cool to see kids get rewarded for hard work. Always. So now we're going to put you in the spot and ask cool. who's play was better. Uh, Megan Sandsbury diving a catch in versus Black Hill State or mm. Adi Valdez from Saturday. Megs is the, the one up for uh, the Rowdy Award, right? For Defensive Play of the Year. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> well, so you're making me choose between Adi and Megan. Yeah, which play was better? I don't think you'll get in trouble by any of them, so. But uh, I'm just going <laughs> to say, gonna say Megan's both. a junior and she's been out there longer. So I'll just go with Audie because it was uh, uh, freshman. And, <laughs> it was job, up against, and it was up against the, the fence, you know, so she had that whole, like, kind of fence fear factor. Both were awesome catches, though. I mean, I voted for Megan, defensive play of the year. Yeah. So it was also senior day on Saturday, and you guys actually celebrated five seniors. You had a couple of long-term seniors. You had a couple of short stint seniors. Uh, and you told Eric that adversity is the one thing that tied all these girls together. Not every girl's senior day is the same. You know, it's not always scripted. Mm -hmm. But it seems like they were made better players because of it. Yeah, better people because of it. Um, like, yeah, a lot of adversity, whether it's, you know, there was injuries involved for multiple girls and also just um, unique paths, like transferring in for three of them. That's always tough to go from one program to the next. You have to learn a new system, new coaching style, all that, um, you know, on the field, off the field stuff. So definitely some adversity, but they all are hard workers. They're all here, you know, kind of plugging forward, pushing forward, and 
Um, I think you, you saw development, maturity on and off the field out of all five, which is pretty cool, and that's you can't ask for much more than that. All right, so we're going to talk about somebody who's not a senior, but okay. someone we bring up a lot, Darby McGee. Yep. She ended up breaking a program record for strikeouts over the weekend. Um, you know, is it about the way that she pitches, her, or is it the arsenal of pitches that have allowed her to rack up this amount of strikeouts? I think it's both. I think she's always had an arsenal of pitches, and then this year, what's made this year a little bit more special for her is the way she's pitching. Um, she has more confidence and just more relaxed this year, and as a result, she's getting better results. Um, she's definitely one of the best pitchers, better pitchers in the league, um, and it's just been really cool to see her development so far as a freshman, now deep into her junior year, to see her just kind of have more fun, trust stuff more herself, namely, uh, more on the field, and as a result, good things are happening for her, both pitching, defense, and at short, and, and hitting, so it's yeah. really cool. It's all about confidence. Yep. <laughs> the, the regular season is over. It's time for that RMAC postseason tournament. What do you tell your girls about the playoffs in terms of feeling or atmosphere? Is there a big difference in and are you hammering home home that these are just like any other games we've played? Um, yeah, that's going to be the message. Like, there's no reason to make it different. Um, there's no reason to make it bigger or smaller than what it is. Like, we're the five seed. We think we can win it. We actually think anybody, will, you know, there's a lot of different people that can win it. But if, if we want to be in position to, to win games and do mm -hmm. some damage at the tournament, we just need to go in there and kind of do what we did this past weekend, be confident make it one play at a time and, and I think good things will happen. And so I, I'm really confident where we're at because I think this team's finally having fun and relaxing and playing their game. Yeah. Coach, we appreciate we appreciate you talking taking the time to uh, to be here Always. with us. Always. <laughs> and great luck to you and your team in the playoffs. Thanks. Thank you. So it's time Am for I our quiz. Oh you gotta blame Eric. He's the one that is, decides. I know he's racking up he's racking up the points with the yeah. other coaches. <laughs> Oh, and she's mad. Off. <laughs> wow, Eric. I guess you're going to have a lot of talks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so now it's time for our second break. But stay close. We'll bring in freshman Lainey Shepard from the softball team on the show up next on the Coach's Corner. In the heart of the city, Metropolitan State University of Denver is holding the line on the American dream. Our students come from every background and experience. They are tenacious, purposeful, entrepreneurial. They choose the highest quality and best value in Colorado higher education, and they choose their own roads from more than 70 undergrad and graduate degrees. Relevant, hands-on, and affordable education. Discover your road to success at msudenver.edu. Hi, I'm Jay Smith, senior guard <laughs> from the women's basketball team. How about that great assist by Jalen Smith off the seat of her pants? And you're watching Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. Welcome back, but before we talk to Lainey, we want to remind you that you need to get your ticket for the 2019 scholarship dinner and auction that will take place on May 31st. Seats and tables will sell out, so make sure to visit roadrunnersathletics.com forward slash auction to find out more information on how you can contribute to student athlete scholarships. It is always a fun event, and we want to make sure that you are there with us to end the 2018-2019 Roadrunner sports season in the right way. So now we welcome in freshman Lainey Shepard from the softball team. Lainey, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. So you have had an incredible freshman year with MSU Denver here in 2019. Did you expect to play as much and to see much success so quickly in your collegiate career? Uh, I didn't, not at all. I was actually expecting like not a lot of freshmen to play a, play a lot, but um, my coach, like she really had my back and she's like, okay, you can do this. And a lot of freshmen got to play and we all just knew we had a lot of support and we've done mm -hmm. pretty good so far. 
That's but what we like to hear. So what surprised you most about collegiate game? Is it the speed of the game? Is it the commitment with college? Or is it the length of the season? Um, I'd probably say the length of the season. I felt like it's a little bit longer than high school season, <laughs> but um, it probably compared to travel ball a little bit. Like we play a lot of games and it's kind of like college, but college is a lot more competitive mm -hmm. and a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot more fun. I like to hear that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you came to downtown Denver from Fountain Valley, California. Correct. Tell us why you decided to come to school here and play softball with the Roadrunners. So my twin and I, um, we both got an offer from Metro and we're like, hey, we really want to go to school together and m we might as well go here because we've got a great offer from softball. And so we're like, let's do this. So we decided to come here and we're, we love it. So yeah. So yeah, you didn't come by yourself, right? You came with no. your sister. Of course, yeah. you had to, she's your twin, so you had to come with her. Yeah, I can't <laughs> leave her alone. <laughs> so did you guys just end up working out that way? Like, well, we, who we how did it start? Like, we kind of planned it. We were like, JJ, I want to go to soft, I want to play softball with you and play, uh, go to school with you. Like. We're, we figured we're gonna be together throughout our whole entire life, so might as well go to college. Same, so. <laughs> yeah, I have a twin sister as well. Did you guys room together? I never room with my sister, but we have a little bit. We have boundaries with ours, you know. We I'm, like to be separate. Yeah, I'm very close with my sister. We um, we bond very well. We have a lot of like people call it twin telepathy or yeah. something like that. And the uh, bond. Yeah, the it's, bond. A, it's a great bond. <laughs> Uh, we can't live without each other, so. Are you the righty or the lefty? I'm the righty. Oh, righty. Keep I'm the lefty. My, <laughs> you know, my sister's the righty, so. Um, so tell us how you got into the sport of softball. Did your parents get you into the sport? Was it your sister? And did you guys get into some competitive battles growing up? So we started playing softball. We actually started playing t-ball, which is baseball, at like probably five years old. So we've played ball for like our whole entire life. And my mom has actually played softball too. Oh, so no. oh. she said, why don't you guys Family just do this sport? sport. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there was one year where I was like, I don't want to play softball. So I went to go play soccer. And then I noticed JJ was playing softball at the time. I was like, I'm kind of missing it. <laughs> so I wanted to go play back and go play softball with her. So I just kind of stuck with softball and left soccer. Here we are. Are any of your parents twins or d where did it come um, from? My dad's side, my uh, my dad's mom is a twin. Oh, okay. yeah, skips the generation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Usual, skips the generation. <laughs> so um, what are you studying here? And if you haven't decided what you are studying for your major, what are some of the things you like to do outside of playing softball? Um, well, I'm studying right now with criminal justice. I and told my twin sister. Yeah, I love it so far. <laughs> it's a great major. I'm learning so much. What's your favorite part about it? Um, actually, I would say just learning new things. I've like, so my dad is also um, a police officer, and oh. that's the route that I want to go in. And um, just learning about the good things and the bad things that are happening mm -hmm. with the police departments, and I kind of want to like to learn what is good and what's bad and what I can improve on if I become a police officer. Awesome. <laughs> so Lainey, thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight and great luck to you and your team in those Armour playoffs. Thank you. <laughs> so before we call it a show, let's tell you what's coming up next this weekend in Roadrunner Road Sports. So as we mentioned, Lainey and the softball team will be heading to Grand Junction to compete in the RMAC tournament this weekend. Coach Van's squad earned the, the fifth seed and will take on Colorado Mines in a game one of the double elimination tournament. We're so excited to see this squad do some damage in the playoffs. The baseball team will wrap up its 2019 regular season with a road series against the Colorado School of Mines. The two squads will compete in double headers on Friday and Saturday, while game one on Friday will kick off at 3 p.m. Make sure you keep up with both teams at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. You can also find video links and watch Lainey doing her thing on postseason on the site as well. Well, that is going to do it for tonight's show. We want to thank Coach Josh, Coach Van, and of course, Lainey Shepard for being here with us tonight. For Katherine Nienbach, I'm Brenda Vasquez. We'll see you next time on the Coach's Corner.